Hi, welcome back to our PCR lectures. We are now ready to open what I would like to call the third chapter, and that is our TPCR and the delta-delta CT calculation method. I know it sounds kind of confusing or even frightening, but this is now real easy if you made it through the first uh, lectures. So we are now ready for amplifications and no. We are ready for applications and what I would like to do is to first uh, introduce you to the most uh, popular um, application of quantitative PCR and that is the detection of RNA. So in a typical setting you're handling your favorite uh, cells in cultures and uh, you will now stimulate them with um, I don't know, anything nasty or anything that they feel good about. And what you're interested in is whether your favorite gene is now e expressed to a higher or lower extent than before. And uh, this is something uh, that you can find out by detecting the RNA levels that correspond to f your favorite gene. So let's assume your RNA is not pressed at particularly high levels, so you can't use old-fashioned methods like a northern blot analysis for that. Rather, you want to try a quantitative PCR to detect your DNA, your RNA. Well, I'm confusing RNA and DNA, and that already shows you the problem. And that is, um, you typically do PCR using TAC polymerase, and TAC polymerase under normal circumstances won't accept RNA as a template. It needs DNA as a template, otherwise it won't amplify anything. So what can you do? Well, you first need to make cDNA, or copy DNA as we call it, cDNA, from your RNA. So how can you do that? Well, as you know, you can do this with an enzyme that has been isolated from retroviruses. And those viruses are characterized by the ability to transcribe RNA back into DNA. And that's why we call it reverse transcriptase. That's the enzyme. And reverse transcription, that's the reaction. That's what we need to do first. And what we need for that is RNA-dependent DNA polymerase, most people simply call this reverse transcriptase. Reverse transcriptase, as I said, is derived from retroviruses, and I'm sure you all have heard about HIV, the human immunodeficiency virus. That's also a retrovirus. However, that's not the kind of retroviruses where we take the um, reverse transcriptase from if we need it in the lab. Instead, we get it from what's called simple retroviruses that typically infect rodents or birds. Well, why am I telling you that? Well, there is an important consequence of that. And that is, if you take an enzyme or use an enzyme that's got its optimum function evolved in rodents or birds, what you need to do is use a temperature that would be typically found in rodents and birds, and that's anything between 37 and 42 degrees Celsius. You can't use those 72 degrees that is accepted by TAC polymerase. The reverse transcriptase would simply denature and it would no longer be functional. So that's why you need to do the reverse transcription at a temperature between 37 up to, well, at most 45 degrees is okay, but not more than that, okay? And then, like any enzyme, like any DNA polymerase, I should say, like any DNA polymerase, reverse transcriptase needs a primer. It needs something, it needs a five prime end where it can put the next nucleotides onto in order to come up with a long DNA strand. So you need a primer. You need a primer that would bind to your favorite RNA that you're trying to amplify. And you know, in most cases, you're trying to amplify messenger RNA. Messenger RNA is usually carrying polyanonylation at its 3' end. Not all messenger RNAs do that. For instance, histone messenger RNAs don't do that. 
but the others do have this poly A tail. And you can take advantage of that by using oligo DT as a primer in order to get reverse transcription into that direction. That can be convenient, but let's assume that the region that you're trying to amplify is up here. Then maybe oligo DT is not the best choice, because if you still use oligo DT, the reverse transcription may not go all the way through up to the region that you're trying to amplify here. So in such a case, it's better to use what we call random hexamers. That's just six nucleotides put together and that is being done in a random fashion. So those random hexanucleotides would anneal pretty much anywhere along your target messenger RNA and also along any other messenger RNA that you might have in your, your sample. And then again, you do the reverse transcription from here into the reverse direction. And finally, what you can also use is what we call specific primers, meaning that you design a primer that binds right downstream from the region that you are trying to amplify. And this would then result in the reverse transcription of a only fairly low subset of uh, RNAs. And so you start with a more specific set of cDNAs that you can now put into your uh, PCR mix. However, the disadvantage of that is that you will now be able to use your cDNA only to amplify this one gene that you had in mind. And if you then later come and make up your mind and you try to amplify something else, you have to do the reverse transcription from scratch. Whereas if you use a random hexamer or if you use oligo DT, this will work on most messenger RNA, so you can still use the same sample of cDNA later on to amplify something different. And that's why most people would use a mixture of random hexamers and oligo DT to prime your reverse transcription. So once you put that together, you let the enzyme do its job to make cDNA or copy DNA, and you then use this copy DNA to perform PCR. Here we are again. This is our quantitative PCR then.